Welcome back to For Your Child's Health. We've been uh, talking with Tom Collins, Child Life Specialist, and joining us now is Dr. Maureen Hurd, Director of Anesthesiology uh, from Children's Hospital, both. Um, right now we're going to be discussing the relationship between the Child Life Specialist and the anesthesiologist. But first, I want to point to this. <laughs> you brought this for well, the show. Tom for me. did. <laughs> well, we just thought it uh, kind of reflects how we try to soften the experience at a children's hospital and so children when they come to have surgery we always give them a, a teddy bear and it has the, the, the mask, mask on, on it sort of soften that a little bit and um, and also um, we thought you know it'd be a good reflection of the the kinds of things we do so okay so you know I can play with him as we're yeah, talking right. to her put him back in my coffee cup well, we all need transitional objects yes we and do and that's one of the things that we talk about with the children when they come in for um, surgery is if they have a teddy bear or a blanket and in fact we find that sometimes even teenagers will yeah. bring in uh, something that comforts them and we've learned that that helps them a lot. You know what, we're never too old, That's I tell right. you what. Um, Dr. Hurd, what, what, what does it mean to have a child life specialist working with you in the anesthesiology department? Um, well to say that it makes our job easier is the understatement of the year. Um, I'll give you an example, and that would be that Tom would work with the with the teddy bear. First of all, all and when you go to an, when you go into surgery, everybody has masks on to keep sterility in sure. place, and that's a frightening experience. You cannot see people's face, and so children can't see a face, and so therefore they don't they don't really understand that it's a person behind that face, and so what Tom does is he shows them this bear with the with the mask on and then they understand that there's just a bear behind that mask and so that helps that that's the that's just a simple example of the way that the child life will then make my job easier because then they're not frightened with me when I come to them with I with a mask on and so then the, then the children basically translate it translates into a successful experience for everybody. Well, we were watching some video earlier of Tom with uh, little Alina and her mom, Diane, mm -hmm. and you were demonstrating the, the IV and talking about it's not an owie because the anesthesia obviously keeps them from feeling any kind of pain, but there's also the fear of going to sleep, and so how do you bridge that psychologically? I, I think the key thing is to, to bring in the concept of rehearsal. And mm -hmm. in olden days, people felt like they had to be careful what they told their children because they'd be afraid that they wouldn't want to participate. And what we found is actually the reverse. When we rehearse in a way that meets the developmental issues that the child is going through, they're much more able to participate in a way that makes it possible not only for them to cope, but for the staff to be able to get through their experience in a timely way. And there must be a fine line between too much information and not enough what's age appropriate. Right. Another th another aspect of that is that that it's really important to talk to the children. So one of the things I think that maybe some adult facilities don't really get, they don't really understand when, when adult um, anesthesiologists or personnel are dealing with children is that they don't really understand that you need to actually talk to the children. Well, I mean, you need to actually say to them, one on this, one. Is what's gonna sure. "This is what's going to happen." You're talking to the parents, but at the same time, you're actually looking at the child, explaining to them what's going to happen, and Tom facilitates that. So we're actually bringing them into it, and we are also going to show folks exactly what it's like. Uh, I, I had an opportunity to meet one of your pediatric anesthesiologists. She was able to describe the whole anesthesia process uh, to us. So here's an inside yeah. look with Dr. Dominica Motas. There are many ways to deliver anesthesia. Most of the patients do have an IV. The IV we're able to place in most, most children after they're asleep. Many of the children get a sedative beforehand, um, so they are a little bit more relaxed, so they don't remember a lot of the experience. But you can imagine that walking into a, an environment like this with all the monitors and lights is scary, and so child life really helps prepare. Um, kids to make this a little more familiar. Uh, we have lots of different smells, everything from bubble gum to chocolate to strawberry, watermelon, um, and it gives the children something to focus on as they are going off to sleep. Parents are here with them and we use the anesthetic gases um, and have children go off to sleep here with mom and dad talking to them, singing them a song, telling them a nursery rhyme, telling them they're going to go out for pizza or burgers afterwards. Um, we're able to monitor kids here to keep them safe. Great. Mom and dad are then able to say goodbye, know that their child is asleep, is safe, and we'll see them after the procedure. 
This is a pediatric difficult airway simulator. Not all places have this. This is super unique. And you can see that this is a lot smaller than the other um, scope that we had. This is something that we use for a small baby in order to put in a breathing tube. So you actually can still watch it as you go. This is what guides you through the air passage. Absolutely, and it has a camera on the end, you can see here. I think that probably the most challenging kids are the extremely premature infants. Um, they're very fragile from the heart and lung perspective. They don't have a lot of reserve. But I think every age group brings up different emotional challenges. There's a big innocence to children. Um, a lot of our children have chronic yeah. medical problems, and um, they don't always understand them. Um, and they're very scared of them, and it's very, um, very uh, fulfilling to be able to help them through such a difficult time. For more information or to support Children's Hospital Oakland, go to childrenshospitaloakland.org or call 510-428-3043. And there's more to come on For Your Child's Health. Stay with us.